One of the most important contributions of the Wesleyan movement to the larger church is in fact Wesley's doctrine of Christian perfection. And that doctrine has, I mean, it's central to Wesleyanism. In fact, I, I would argue you can't be a Wesleyan unless you believe that God's grace is powerful enough to transform human life. Um, what, what you see in Wesleyanism, really, it, at the core of it is an optimistic view of God's grace. We try not to limit God's grace. And if it says in the scripture, be ye perfect, therefore as your heavenly Father is perfect, if we're coming to that as a Wesleyan, um, any command in the Bible, in fact, for Wesley is a covered promise. So the command to be perfect is not some command to, that, that God gave as kind of a tease, but in fact is a command that God has promised that he will help us to do. And in fact, you see that in 1 Thessalonians, at the end of Paul's letter, where he, where he, uh, he says, may God um, sanctify you entirely, through you know, every bit of you, and God is faithful and he will do this. Now, where did Wesley get this idea, though? It, this, the, the idea of Christian perfection doesn't come out of thin air. And in fact, it has a long history um, from the beginning of the Christian church. Now, where Wesley um, really received the idea, though, I mean, we have to be honest, Wesley was an Anglican. And if you take Wesley out of his Anglican context, he's hard to understand. And I think that's one lesson we need to learn. But where did he get his ideas about grace? And where did he get his ideas about perfection? I would argue that you can see very clearly that John Wesley um, understood grace and perfection as it was laid out in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, we have to remember, John Wesley prayed using the Book of Common Prayer almost every day of his life. And in fact, I tell my students, because one of my professors told me this, and now as a professor myself, I tell my students, if you want to understand John Wesley, you need to have the King James Bible and the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. And if you dive into those, you're going you're to start to understand Wesley. But how did he define grace? Well, he, he defined grace very simply as the power of the Holy Spirit. But where did he get that? He got that from the Collect for Grace in Morning Prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. And it's likely that he prayed this or heard this. In fact, he heard it the morning of his Aldersgate experience at St. Paul's Cathedral. Every day of his life he heard this. And it's interesting because it's entitled the collect for prayer, and a collect is just a prayer, I mean a collect for grace. A collect is simply a prayer, a form of prayer. It never mentions grace at all in the collect. It talks about God's empowerment and God's governance. And so grace is seen as God's empowerment in Anglicanism and in Wesleyanism. Now, what about perfection? Again, I'd say go back to the prayer book. Um, at the beginning of every communion service, in the Book of Common Prayer, there's a prayer called the Great Collect. And it says, Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Right there, you have the doctrine of Christian perfection, empowered by God's Holy Spirit to perfectly love God. That's Christian perfection in a nutshell. And, it, and it's much broader than Wesleyanism, in fact. Now, what does the word perfect mean for Wesley and for some of these other Anglicans? Uh, it's not supposed to be understood as a static word. And I think that's where people stumble when they come across this word. Sometimes, if it's necessary, we talk about wholeness, which uh, would be how St. Luke, in fact, described. Um, uh, you know, St. Mark said, uh, be ye perfect. Um, uh, in Luke, he, uh, Luke has Jesus say, be ye complete, right? And of course, I'm using the King James because that's what Wesley would have read. Um, but it's not a static perfection. It's in fact a perfection. Uh, he gets it from Aristotle, and I don't want to bring up all the memories of philosophy 101, but the idea is being complete as you are meant to be complete. So what does it mean for a human to be complete? Well, I think Christians should know the answer is to look like Jesus. In fact, not just to look like Jesus, but to live like Jesus did. That's perfection. That's completeness, wholeness, made possible by the Holy Spirit. Now, what about sin? How does sin work in all this? One thing I would say is that for Wesleyans, the focus is not sin. The focus is love and being perfected in love. Now, one way in which I've heard it described, which I think is very helpful, is Christian perfection is 
um, when the heart is simply filled with the love of God so that sin no longer reigns in the heart. That's another way of describing Christian perfection. Now, there are all kinds of ways of looking at sin, how is it dealt with, and, and other things like that. Mainly for Wesley, sin was a very intentional thing that you did against God and neighbor. And so Christian perfection is about being filled with the love of God so that you don't do those things. And in fact, it's not a matter of coming to everything, every encounter in life and saying, all right, am I going to sin or am I going to do this in love? But for Wesley, Christian perfection was a process leading up to, a, to an experience whereby love becomes natural. And it becomes not a choice with every single encounter, but in fact something that is naturally flowing out of the heart. So when does this happen, though? That's a great question. Wesley argued that most people only experience perfection right before they die. Um, now, but he said, don't expect that that should be the case in every instance. And, he, and in fact, he told people over and over again, in fact, there's a great line, he says, be a Methodist still. And Muddy, what he meant by that was, expect perfection now. Expect that God will transform your heart now. So when does it happen? It happens when, by faith, um, God does that work in our hearts. It's a process before, it's a process after, it's an instantaneous moment. It's all of the above. I think that confuses people at times, but at the same time we have to remember it's not a static perfection. It's a dynamic perfection. Essentially what the idea of Christian perfection is, is being made whole in love. And if we remember that, I think we will have a better understanding of Christian perfection from the Wesleyan perspective. <laughs>